Gilda Radner was an iconic figure who transformed the landscape of American comedy. On SNL, she was nothing short of a comedic genius. She brought to life myriad characters, each uniquely charming and hysterically funny. She was also a complex individual. She faced numerous challenges, including a public struggle with an eating disorder and the stress of being in the constant glare of the media spotlight. Sadly, her life took a somber turn in 1989, when at 42 years of age, she succumbed to ovarian cancer. Facts First presents Gilda Radner died at 42. Now her secrets come to light. Gilda's Unforgettable Journey Born Gilda Susan Radner on June 28, 1946 in Detroit, Michigan, she was raised in a Jewish household, the daughter of Henrietta, a legal secretary, and Herman Radner, a businessman. She fought eating disorders from a young age and faced the heartbreak of losing her father to a brain tumor when she was only 14. The entertainment world caught her eye as a child, and her father, before he passed, would often whisk her away to New York to see Broadway shows. Gilda took the formal route to nurture her acting skills. She started at the University of Michigan, but eventually dropped out, to follow then-boyfriend Jeffrey Rubinoff to Toronto. It was there she made her professional acting debut in a 1972 production of Godspell, alongside future stars like Eugene Levy, Andrea Martin, and Martin Short. It was the beginning of a journey that saw her joining the Second City comedy troupe in Toronto and eventually landing her most iconic role as one of the original cast members of SNL. When it comes to Saturday Night Live, Gilda was a powerhouse. She specialized in turning TV stereotypes on their heads, creating memorable characters like Roseanne Rosanna Dana, the obnoxious personal advice expert, and Emily Latella, the well-meaning but terribly misinformed commentator. Her parody of Barbara Walters as Baba Wawa was so spot on that even Walters had to acknowledge it as the first of its kind. These characters didn't just make people laugh, they shifted the boundaries of comedy, making Gilda a hero for aspiring comedians, particularly women. For her efforts, she won an Emmy in 1978 and later brought her characters to Broadway in 1979, where she enjoyed significant success. But the stress of being a comedy icon came at a cost. Gilda was not untouched by struggles, both emotional and physical. She openly talked about her eating disorders in her autobiography, It's Always Something, and even managed to keep away from the lure of cocaine, unlike some of her SNL peers. Her career choices also reflected a desire for autonomy. She once turned down a primetime variety show offer from NBC. Even her relationship with Bill Murray, another SNL icon, ended in an undisclosed but seemingly painful manner. Apart from the spotlight, she explored various creative avenues. She found her footing in theater, starring in the Broadway show Gilda Radner Live from New York, and ventured into movies, though not as successfully. Her SNL colleague Lorraine Newman felt Gilda's unique talents were often underused in Hollywood because she was often not a part of the writing process for her roles. In her final years, she was open about her life's journey, struggles, and battles with her illness. Her widower, Gene Wilder, carried on her wish to help others by founding organizations that support cancer patients. They focus on early diagnosis and attention to hereditary factors. Even after her death, Gilda earned accolades winning a Grammy, an induction into the Michigan Women's Hall of Fame, and a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Personal Struggles and Final Years in her lifetime, Gilda wore many hats, comedian, actress, wife, but she also faced her share of trials. During the filming of Haunted Honeymoon, Gilda started feeling worn out and was dealing with leg pain. Doctors couldn't figure out what was wrong for nearly a year, misdiagnosing her multiple times. To make matters worse, a book detailing her battle with an eating disorder was published around the same time. The book got a lot of attention and added to her stress. And Haunted Honeymoon didn't do well at the box office either. Finally, the mystery of her health was solved, but it was devastating news. She was diagnosed with stage 4 ovarian cancer. She went through surgery right away and started intensive treatments like chemotherapy and radiation. They caused her a lot of physical and emotional pain. Media wasn't kind to her during this time either. A headline declared she was in a, quote, life-death struggle, causing a lot of distress to her family and friends. Gene Wilder had to issue a statement to set the record straight about her health condition. For a while, things started to look up. Gilda was told she was in remission. She even wrote her book detailing her battle with cancer. 
Life magazine did a cover story on her, talking about her fight against the illness. She was also set to host SNL, which would have made her the first female former cast member to do so. Sadly, she found out the cancer had returned. In May of 1989, she was admitted to the hospital for a scan and slipped into a coma. Sadly, she never woke up and passed away three days later. The news of her death was a shock, especially for those working on SNL. The show that night paid tribute to her, reminding everyone of the joy and laughter she brought into their lives. Gilda's Lasting Legacy One of the most significant aspects of Gilda Radner's legacy is the immense impact she had on raising awareness about ovarian cancer. After her death, Jean Wilder took steps to honor her by establishing the Gilda Radner Hereditary Cancer Program at Cedars-Sinai Medical Center. The program aims to screen high-risk candidates for ovarian cancer, especially those with a family history of the disease. Jean even testified before Congress, arguing that better family history inquiries could have led to earlier diagnosis and treatment for Gilda. Cedars-Sinai also hosts the Gilda Radner Ovarian Detection Center, focused on early detection of ovarian cancer. These medical programs have screened numerous high-risk candidates and have undoubtedly saved lives by doing so. Media attention following her death helped in the registration of 450 families with familial ovarian cancer at what was initially the Familial Ovarian Cancer Registry, later renamed in her honor. Gilda's story served as the foundation for the creation of Gilda's Club, a network of clubhouses that offer support to those living with cancer. This invaluable resource has since merged with the wellness community to form the Cancer Support Community, which as of 2012 had more than 20 local affiliates active across the U.S. and Canada. Gilda's story and struggle have also been the subject of various tributes in media and entertainment. In 2002, ABC dedicated a three-hour block to her, and she was also featured in a 2007 film tribute to female Jewish comedians. She got her star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 2003, thanks to a campaign led by producer and actor James Tuminia and other notable figures. Awards and Honors Gilda won an Emmy in 1977 for her performance on SNL. Posthumously, she received a Grammy Award in 1990 for Best Spoken Word or Non-Musical Recording. And in 1992, she was inducted into the Michigan Women's Hall of Fame. And let's not forget that streets in several cities have been renamed Gilda Radner Way in her honor. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite memory of Gilda Radner? Let us know in the comments section below.